SpaceX Starlink sat phone in your pocket. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. That zing, that bergamot, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking about DTC or direct to sell from SpaceX Starlink. Very, very interesting. There's a bunch of new information that came out. I want to give this to you. I was reading a couple of articles. One of the articles was over at PC Magazine. They did a pretty good job at breaking things down. So I want to go through some of that with you, give you my commentary. Then, of course, I want to hear from you after I'm done jabbering my lips. Down below, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think about all of this. And if you don't want to put something down there because you're shy, that's fine. Put an emoji. That works out perfectly. I don't care what kind of emoji. It could be a poop emoji. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to say that if you enjoyed the content, throw it a thumbs up. That's always appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want any of my free ebooks, we do have a couple over there. Check them out. They're free just for you being here. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button. You could give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you want more Starlink content, I put together over 350 videos just for you. Check them out. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and the why behind all of it. Because as always, why is what this channel is all about. So let's jump right into this article. Then once again, I'll give you my commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you. What do you think? More important than what I think, this talking head. SpaceX's up and coming cellular Starlink service won't always need a clear view of the sky to receive signal. The Starlink satellites can communicate with a phone even while in your pocket, according to Ben Longmire, a SpaceX senior director for satellite engineering. Longmire has been testing SpaceX's direct to sell Starlink service, which the company already confirmed works indoors. On Sunday, Longmire elaborated in a tweet saying, quote, I do most of my testing inside at my dinner table. It's near a window. SpaceX DTC or direct to sell also works in a pocket facing away from the satellites and inside a Tesla. Very important. I really thought that the human body would attenuate more signal, he added. Guess not. The statement offers a glimpse of the potential capabilities of cellular Starlink satellites, which will first support text messages before powering voice calls and internet downloads. SpaceX is developing the technology to help mobile carriers provide coverage in cellular dead zones, which are often located in remote areas. The company is still waiting for the FCC to clear the cellular Starlink service for commercial operations. In the meantime, the agency gave SpaceX emergency approval to use the cellular Starlink satellites for text messaging to help hurricane victims, resulting in hundreds of thousands of messages delivered, according to T-Mobile's CEO. Hundreds of thousands of messages. Amazing. SpaceX has been offering emergency SMS messaging for hurricane victims on a best effort basis since the company still needs to launch more satellites to improve coverage. In a separate tweet, Longmire said SpaceX was able to turn on emergency SMS for Hurricane Milton affected areas in under 24 hours. That's pretty damn quick. Quote, in the future, I think we can get that down to 10 minutes of reaction time for any areas on Earth from 58 degrees north to 58 degrees south latitude, he added. Other tests from the company show that the cellular Starlink service can deliver download rates at 17 megabits per second, but it looks like it will take a while for SpaceX to roll out that capability to users. In the same tweet, Longmire noted that cellular Starlink will first support, quote, near continuous light data in 2025 for mobile phones before offering continuous broadband and voice support later on. 
To unleash the full capabilities of the cellular Starlink service, SpaceX has been urging the FCC to grant a waiver for it to exceed normal radio emission limits for the satellite technology. The company told the commission last month that if the waiver is denied, the service risks losing real-time voice and video calling capabilities. However, several communication firms, including AT&T and Verizon, have been lobbying the FCC to deny the waiver over concerns the cellular Starlink satellites will generate radio interference with their own networks. Bullshit. <laughs> Anyways, so I'll give you my thoughts on it, all right? Then I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this? I'll give you some facts that will help with this. But you know, I kinda like diving in a little bit, putting a little bit more meat on the bones, so to speak. Number one, how many of these DTC satellites are up there, currently in operational orbit. And in totality, there's about 250. This means that those satellites are equipped with E-node Bs, basically like modems, high-powered modems, all right, that have transformed those Starlink satellites into these DTC satellites, which are that direct-to-cell satellite. Basically creating a cell tower in space at 530 kilometers in space. Not a kilometer or two away from you like most cell towers are, right? Not a couple of kilometers, We're talking about 530 kilometers, yet they're able to get signal to your phone in your pocket or even get signal to your phone indoors. Pretty crazy, absolutely crazy. Now, Starlink has launched over a hundred missions so far with their Falcon 9, and the majority of those missions have been satellites, their own satellites, SpaceX's Starlink satellites, including some of these DTC satellites, which is amazing. They're going to be getting to probably about 120, I'm gonna guess, maybe 125 by the end of the year. Another thing that you need to know is SpaceX has already tested this back in May with video conference calling and it worked. They were able to get to about 17 megabits per second and they were able to have a conversation with someone with no cell, no Wi-Fi, no nothing, literally with everything turned off just using a SpaceX Starlink satellite. That to me is amazing. Now, that's not gonna be offered until like 2026, but they already did it this year. It happened in May and it worked out. Now, did it look a little pixelated like a Minecraft? Yeah, it didn't look great, but still, this is with an unmodified phone. It doesn't matter, just like your phone in your pocket, you could have done this. That is just mind blowing to me. Once again, from a cell tower at 530 kilometers away. Absolutely amazing. Now, one of the things I didn't like in the news is that that's all we heard about was T-Mobile's CEO saying how they received hundreds of thousands of text messages from victims of Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene. That's fine and all, but all of these news agencies missed the big picture. And the big picture or the big story that they buried on like page 56 is that not only T-Mobile customers were able to receive that DTC service based on the FCC granting SpaceX this emergency approval, this waiver, let's say, that allowed them to use it during this emergency. But what I found out during a live is that I was able to text my wife sitting next to me during this time because we were in the aftermath of Hurricane Milton. Since we were turned on to this DTC service, I was able to do it with my AT&T service provider, not T-Mobile. And at the time I said, what is going on here? I thought it was only gonna be for T-Mobile people. And I remember talking to Fabiola next to me, I said, you know, they need to make it available to everyone. This is no reason for one guy on the top of his house trying to make this phone call from Verizon or AT&T or someone that die in comparison to the guy on the top of his house that has T-Mobile and he lives. That would be a problem, right? So that's exactly what they did. They don't talk about it in the news, but they opened it up. SpaceX, Starlink, their DTC service was opened up to everyone in those areas where they were affected by Milton as well as Helene. So this is really good information. Once again, it was not just T-Mobile. 
everyone received that service and I can attest to it. You can go back to my live and you will see me actually send a message to Fabiola. And the reason I think that this is really important is during this time that all of these carriers got coverage for their customers, life-saving coverage. You didn't hear about the lobbyists complaining at that time that SpaceX, Starlink gave their customers free service, this DTC service, that AT&T and Verizon have been lobbying against. They didn't do that, right? There was no problem. I didn't hear none of that at the time. I also didn't hear that SpaceX's Starlink's DTC service somehow impacted AT&T or Verizon's network. Did you hear anything of that? No, because it doesn't. Just like what SpaceX said way back when, they said, listen, the service will not impact any of the current carriers out there, yet they keep on saying that they will. And it simply is not the case. Here's a perfect example. They opened it up to many states that were affected. You didn't hear a damn thing about somehow AT&T or Verizon's customers were compromised due to SpaceX Starlink's DTC service, did you? No. Why? Because it doesn't affect them, yet they continue to lobby against SpaceX Starlink. Elon Musk, they don't like them. And the reason behind it is not just because they don't like them. The reason AT&T and Verizon are lobbying the FCC to deny SpaceX Starlink the additional coverage or strength, increased strength to the service, is not because it's going to impact their network. The reason is, is it's going to impact their sales. It is once again going to be an alternative, an alternative to these telcos. Period. Because once there are thousands of these DTC satellites up there, thousands, what's going to end up happening is they're going to be lower in orbit because they've already asked to be able to bring these down from 530 kilometers down into the 400th range. This is going to make them even more powerful, stronger, faster speeds, lower latency, basically better everything. All right. Once this happens, how... Will AT&T and Verizon sell to their customers? How do they do it? If you can get it from satellite, let's say at a cheaper price, maybe if you have SpaceX Starlink in your house, you'll be able to use SpaceX Starlink's DTC service on your phone for free, right? Because you already pay the $120 a month or something like that. Or maybe it's a small nominal fee for using it on your phone. Let's just say that that is the case. What will these major telcos what would they do? Just think about that. They are making billions and billions and billions of dollars off our backs for decades. What would they do? SpaceX Starlink would be a major competitor that can stir things up and not in a good way. All right. And they are hating it. And they're trying to figure their way out of a figuring out bag. And that bag is wet and they still can't break through it. They're having the hardest damn time trying to figure it out. So what are they doing? They are just pushing back, pushing back, getting all of their lobbyists to lobby the FCC, to deny, to deny, to not, to stall, to give us time to figure out what the hell are we gonna do? Because they know the writing is on the damn wall. Just like I said, many, many, many moons ago, like almost four years ago, three and a half years ago, I said, listen, when SpaceX Starlink comes out, you're going to see companies like HughesNet and Viasat go out of business. All right. They've been raping people for long enough. They're out. I also said DirecTV and Dish Network will also be going out of business because everything is going IP. IPTV, VoIP phone, everything is IP. You do not need them anymore. Right. They will be going out of business. What ended up happening? They ended up joining forces. So now you have DirecTV ended up buying Dish Network. Who would have thunk it? Me, three and a half years ago, right? They're all going out of business, right? They don't even know it. The writing is on the wall. And just like I said, at the very beginning, I said, hey, when this DTC service started getting, let's say hot, and we started talking about it, I said, you know, these telcos, they need to start shaking in their boots because what are they gonna do when Elon could actually have DTC working with thousands, maybe even 10,000 satellites around the world? 
even closer in orbit. It's a problem for them, and I'm happy to see it. I'm gonna sit back with my popcorn and just watch them sweat. Once again, they've made hundreds, just billions of dollars on our backs, billions. Anyways, what say you? What do you think about all of this? Down below, I wanna hear from you. Anyways, let me finalize with, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you, and my merch, and my tees, and my shirts, and my books, and everything else. Go to jchristina.com. If there's something there that you like, pick it up and help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.